Hi, I'm Ed Sproling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at FlexLogic with Tony Kosacek, who's going to talk today about microcontrollers and programmable microcontrollers. Tony, the microcontroller market has been a tough market to survive in. It's both low cost as well as fairly complex, and it's getting more complex all the time, particularly as we get down into uh, some of the advanced process nodes and where the mass costs are going up. Programmability is one way of defeating some of those rising costs. How hard is it to work with uh, programmability in this market? Well, if you use uh, embedded FPGAs, for instance, uh, you could solve some of the uh, issues where microcontrollers are trying to uh, be applied into different markets and where you, your IOs, for instance, are, ch are changing or you have uh, very different flavors of IOs. So, so one area that we could use embedded FPGA is in the, uh, for IOs in an MCU. So usually an IO in an MCU, which would be a, a block connecting to probably in an ABBA bus, which we call a APB bus. And that's a internal bus in an SOC or MCU. We could, and then uh, uh, this is, would be an IO block of some sort going to some GPIOs uh, to the outside world. And Usually, you have limited amount of GPIOs, so you would have maybe 16, 32 GPIOs. So GPIOs represent pins, so usually you would have a limited amount of pins in these MCUs. So the, one of the ways to actually use embedded FPGAs is to be able to uh, change these, this fixed I.O. function into an embedded FPGA and uh, be able to program different RTLs. So for instance, let's say you have uh, a fu a one function, I'll call it function, uh, let's say this is an I squared C uh, function in RTL, you could program that, and now your I.O. is an I squared C controller. You could maybe program, this is RTL by the way, so this is RTL code, and you could program, uh, let's say, another function we call two, just reprogram it to maybe a SPI bus. And, and again, new RTL, and then you just program here. So uh, having the embedded FPGA, uh, you could actually have different I.O. functionality. So what does an accelerator bring to this? So the, uh, what the accelerator does, it usually accelerators have different flavors. For instance, you would have an accelerator that could be, and they also sit on different, uh, uh, more, more like a coprocessor bus. So an accelerator would, uh, the flexibility in an accelerator would offer options to accelerate uh, different functions without actually committing to the uh, silicon area to accelerate only one function. So for instance, an accelerator, another block we could call uh, accelerator, and I'll call this an accelerator, and you, usually this sits on off a bus like a AMBA AXI bus. And so an accelerator usually uh, could be something like an AES accelerator or a SHA encryption or, uh, or SHA algorithm or maybe some kind of a MPEG or JPEG encoder or decoder. You want to you accelerate those functions. So you could have an embedded FPGA uh, array and uh, we, we change out the accelerator functions without actually just having a fixed function. It's very similar to the I.O. In this case here you have another function, uh, we'll call this uh, AES, and so again, this is RTL, you just program the uh, accelerator function there. So typically when you build an MCU, you're thinking of everything on one uh, chip. Is this now sitting off chip to do this? No, these are all internal, these are all embedded, so these are uh, actually connected internal to um, uh, the internal fabric, internal uh, buses. And so this is all part of the uh, I, uh, the SOC. So the accelerator is like a, a, a coprocessor in the system. And this is a lot different than the old MCU where you pretty much had a single processing element and that was about it tied into memory on chip and, that, and some sort of I.O., right? Correct. So in this case here, you're, uh, 
your accelerator is also communicating to memory so you can offload on DMA back and forth and it gives you a lot more flexibility because the accelerator, accelerator function could uh, actually uh, actually uh, not only offload uh, uh, the CPU because you want to offload a CPU also uh, takes less power so the CPUs could be even shut down while you're doing acceleration especially if you're moving data in and out of memory. So what kinds of things can you do with this that you couldn't do before with just a single processor? Well, some of the things you could do is uh, you could have one uh, SOC that could have different personalities, for instance, so and address different markets. Uh, accelerators are very fine-tuned into certain markets, but if, if you build a chip that has a certain, let's say, encryption in accelerator, that's going to be really geared for some security, but if your application is nothing to do with security, but maybe with, uh, let's say, with media, uh, you would need to have some kind of acceleration for the media. So this offers one chip that could fit multiple markets, and that's a, that's a big advantage. Does the bus structure inside the chip have to be any different? No, actually that's the one of the uh, uh, things that we're looking at, to how you you could use the embedded FPGA within the bus, bus stru structure. The, and I picked uh, the AMBA AXI and the AMBA APB, uh, the AXI being more of a high bandwidth bus and APB is more like an I.O. bus. And so with those two buses which are already there in the system, you could just connect uh, to a regular uh, system bus and, they, and then you could uh, just add, right now, you have uh, a lot of capabilities with these buses. You just add another uh, another device on these buses. Some of these chips have been been going multi-core as opposed to just single core. Does this alleviate some of that? Is it is it harder to work with an embedded FPGA than it is, say, a single core versus multiple cores? Not really, because the multiple cores uh, you could still use multiple cores, but at the same time you could uh, even offload some of the cores. A lot of reason why people have multiple cores is to be able to do a, a multi-threaded and maybe some acceleration in, uh, in, in parallel. What the, the accelerator is more like a heterogeneous processing where you have now a uh, different kind of processing which things could be done in parallel versus the time sequential that you could do in, in the CPU. And so this is really works in tandem in conjunction with the multi-core. The multi-cores could do things well with things that are very sequential, and the accelerator does really well when you're doing things that are spatial. If you're getting more granular with the processing elements, which is really what you're doing here, what do you have to do with the memory on the chip? The, the memory we, the memory on the chip, uh, we, as far as the uh, accelerator or I.O., you could, you could access the system memory, and uh, that's one thing that uh, we we could do with the accelerator just like you could do with any other accelerator. But uh, we also offer, and uh, with an embedded FPGA, you could also have dedicated uh, RAM, and so you could talk to from that uh, added memory. Especially like you have uh, when you do certain kind of acceleration, it requires a lot of localized memory, and so the accelerator could actually be connected to that local memory. So how much of an improvement do you get using an accelerator versus just a single processor? Well, one of the uh, improvements uh, you could get uh, is the fact that the accelerator functions uh, uh, do things, uh, one, one thing very fast. And so you could, for instance, if you're doing an AES uh, uh, encryption or decryption on a 256 byte uh, element, you could, only, you could run it about, uh, about 100, 250 times faster with the accelerator because you, it doesn't take uh, that many clock cycles. Do that same, for instance, AES function in the CPU. It would take thousands of cycles to do the same thing. So clock cycles uh, is one thing. And uh, clock cycles also translate into energy. So if you're using less clocks, you, you could actually also uh, consume less power. And these are entirely 32-bit, right? That's not the, the 8 and 16-bit uh, microcontrollers? You could actually do anything in the accelerator. The accelerator could be uh, 16, 32, 128. That's the nice thing about these uh, accelerators, uh, and especially with embedded FPGAs, you could have very wide buses. You're not limited to 
the, the bus uh, of a CPU, for instance, a CPU, is either going to be a 32-bit, 64-bit, uh, and that's, that's the data width that you're actually uh, reading and writing from memory. Uh, the, the accelerator, actually, especially when there's dual localized memory, you could do as wide as you want. Would you mix and match, though, on the same uh, MCU? So if you had a 16-bit MCU, would you potentially go up to 64-bit on the accelerator? You could, because uh, you could take more uh, data in parallel and then crunch it faster. So yes, you could. Tony Kosicek, thanks for a great explanation. You're welcome.